Let's start in on the sun rays next. The sun ray, think of it as just, um, you could even call it like beams. Uh, we want to have some light shafts coming down from the top going downward, but using a particle system for it. Go ahead and have the scene grid opened. We're going to go down to where we see sun rays right here. And inside of it, we'll have our texture and our material. The texture itself, this is just going to be a, let me open it up there. So it's going to be just a little standard little image going across. The The direction is this way for the texture going on here. So it's going to just kind of stretch this and give it a kind of a glowy feel to it. Let's go ahead and go to our hierarchy and go to create. Go down to the particle system again. And for the position, again, we'll start at 0, 0, 0. All right, so let's go ahead and start in on our particle system. We'll go ahead and go to our render. We'll drag our sun rays material over to the material rollout right there. So we start off with this. If you notice, we have a very plain look to it. We just simply have these lines going up like this. We're gonna start to. We're gonna do one thing to start with. That's down here in the render. There is a render mode. The render mode is how the, the polygon, how this object right here, is going to be rendered. Currently it renders with the square, but you can actually, instead of doing a billboard, you can actually do a stretched billboard. So if you click on the stretch billboard, notice now all of a sudden that same shape, instead of being a square, it actually gets stretched across. So we could actually do something similar to, so like say for instance the length scale, we could actually take it, and do somewhere around a, let's see, yeah, somewhere around a, a 20. We'll probably have something like that for the size of it. All right, nice. So these are going to be individual beams coming down, sun shafts or sun rays coming down. Let's go ahead and go back up to the top. Let's work on getting all of our sizes and all of our good stuff figured out for it. Um, up at the top, duration, again, we'll start with just one. We kind of try to stick with that one to, to start with whether it's looping or not, and then build from there. Um, on the start delay, we'll have it start at zero on the lifetime. Um, let's actually give a range to it. That way we can have a variance for how long, uh, when these are actually going. I'm going to do a random between two constants. And we'll start with the first one, we'll say for about uh, three seconds, and we'll let it go to as long as five seconds. On the speed, we actually want to take the speed down to just about nothing. Um, so there's a start speed right there. We could do zero, because what we don't want to do on this one, we don't want it to move. Now notice, when we do zero, you actually don't see anything right here. If I put on the start speed, if I actually put a, a negative uh, 0 0.01, now all of a sudden, instead of movement, we just simply have them popping in and out. So notice bottom of the floor no longer going through, it's just starting right there. And then it shows the objects going across right here. All right. And you can kind of tell just on the shape by itself right now, we're actually dealing with a cone by default. Alright, so let's keep on working through this. Um, the, uh, the rotation, we don't really want to change the rotation, but we do want to change the start size. Um, our start size, we don't want everything starting the same size, so let's do a constant random between two. There we go. So our start size, um, let's go for one that's about a 0.5, and then we'll go for as much as a 0.9, maybe even a whole, like a 1 uh, variance on it. And you kind of decide that once you start to see it. The image we were using was intentional for a gradient. So I'm going to go inside of the start color, and then we just want to choose the color that we're kind of looking at. Uh, the color for this one, let's see. You could do a yellow, you could do a blue or an orange, and just pick a color that you feel like would look pretty cool for uh, uh, for the scenario you might have in mind. I'm going to go a little bit lighter with it right there. And then an important thing to remember is that once you have the color, we also need to add a uh, an alpha amount to here. I'm going to take this down probably about to 100. Yeah, we'll probably go around right around 100 on it. There we go. 
Alright, I'm going to turn off my textured wire now. That way we're just looking at the uh, uh, just the texture itself. Okay, let's take down the alpha a little bit more on our color. Let's see. Yeah, looks like it might be pretty good around a 50 range. We want to be able to see through it, but we still want it to feel like it's glowing, still feel like it's shining. And that's actually getting there. That's, that's looking pretty good. So for me, mine is going to be 255, 255, 109, and 60. So if you're trying to follow along with the same numbers, then this is what we're ending up with. All right. So we have those set in place. The next thing we want to do is go down to our emissions. And the emission amount, currently we have 10, but really, let's start off with just a couple and get the few pieces right. And then if we want to, we can add to it. So we'll go for somewhere around 3 to 5 for those. All right. Now, the next thing is that the sun shafts, it's not really ideal for it to be angled across like this. So go to the shapes. And inside of for our cone, we don't want an angle to it, so just type in zero on this. There we go. Now we're starting to see more of a sun shaft coming down, or a beam, or a ray coming down from it. All right. So we have our our basic setup on this part. The uh, the radius again. This might be if you have something out here, then you want to add more of your emission rate. If you have something really tight, really close in then you might start getting something, for instance, if we had like a 0.5 on here, then you get kind of a nice tight little shape with some nice little beams kind of stretching up with the texture on it. Alright, so one of the things though, if you notice what feels a little bit jumpy on it, is that it's just popping. It gets to the end of its life cycle and it just goes away and then it pops and comes back in. So we want to start to smooth out the uh, uh, the way those look. So the best way to do that again is just going to be that color over lifetime. So if we turn on the color over lifetime and go inside of it, we just want to take from left to right, we want alpha. So on the alpha on the left one, I'm going to take it to zero. And the alpha on the right one, I'm going to take it to zero. And then somewhere in the middle, and we'll just type in the location, we'll do location at 50. And then we'll take the alpha on this one, and we'll just take this one all the way back up. So if you notice, all of a sudden, we have a, a nice little gradient into something, and then straight back out. But now all of a sudden, if you check these out, they have this really fun, kind of soft uh, bounce back and forth between them. So it's not that popping anymore that you got from, from before. Alright, so we'll go ahead and close this one out. So that's just the color over lifetime that's happening there. Now the other thing that, that we want to do, and it's kind of similar to ones that we do before, is that we want to take the, uh, in, let's see, we have our shapes color, here we go. Um, we just want to do our size over lifetime. So we want to make a little bit more of a difference between how this one, uh, how this one actually works between it. We just want a really soft fall off though. So if I select this and go down here, let's click on that one. I'm just going to drag this one down just a little bit. There we go. And we'll do a little bit of a curve so that it has just a nice slope to it. So you could do something really extreme like this and notice you're going to get this kind of falling feel from it. But we don't want it to feel like it's falling. We just want to feel like it's sort of moving. Kind of like when dust hits it where you feel like you sort of see light moving through the dust. There we go. So just a very light, soft movement up towards that top. All right. So this can be our size over lifetime, and then that'll finish us off. We have our render set up right here, and again we use that stretch billboard. And when we set our length over here onto this one, the sort mode, uh, it really unless I mean it's kind of a they're, they're intended to blend together, so whether it's showing the front one or the back one doesn't really matter. If you have things with more detail, if you have stuff that's actually shapes on the uh, particle texture, then you may want to do a little bit more of a sorting onto it. Um, the last thing onto this one, just to make note of, is that your your scale length, you can definitely, you can, you can scale it to start here, and then you can actually have it animating and shooting upwards. Um, it's really just kind of a, depending on 
what the situation is and what it is you want to use with it along with that radius going around it so I'll set this one back to 20 for now and then we'll rename our particle system and just call this sun rays and then just be sure it's set to the 000 and we'll just drag the sun rays over to our sun rays folder and make a prefab out of it and then that'll finish off our sun rays image and then feel free to play around with it some more change up some colors your size and change up the speed if you want to move faster or slower alright so there you go nice job